Everyone, it's Nick with Us Versus Heard. If it's your first time here, you like the content, hit subscribe if you want to get notifications when we go live or post videos like these. Tap the bell. And if you want to join the UVH fam, there's links below to our Discord and our free options trading group. But what I'm going to be talking about today is specifically shorting options on Robinhood and kind of the problems that I see with it. You know, over the last year or so since Robinhood rolled options out, I've seen a lot of people kind of come and go through our community with a lot of questions regarding some of the risks. And Robinhood honestly doesn't doesn't put the risk out there. Knowing that most people that are trading on Robinhood it's their first experience ever trading and or trading options, they should be a little bit more upfront with the risks. And some people, they're given, they're given the opportunity to buy options and short options. They don't necessarily know the risks that go involved with doing that. And that's what I wanna talk about today. And the reason why I'm kind of going towards uh, Robinhood is because there's a lot of beginners on there and it was free. So it's a very big, a lot of people use it. A lot of people in the UVH community still use it. So I'm going to keep talking about it. The more questions that I get, the more I'm still going to talk about it. So if people still have questions about it, we're going to bring it up here on the YouTube and see, you know, I, my, I definitely know that my opinion is not popular and it's just what it is. But this is this is this is my stance and we're going to we're going to go along with it. Um, the one thing the one thing that I would say with Robinhood to kind of start off with one of the problems is they're not as fast as some of the other brokers. And what does I mean by that? Like I'm going to compare I'm going to compare Robinhood to Tastyworks today. And what I mean by that is the 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 orders the order process is not as fast. It takes you longer and it makes you think a lot more on how to put orders through. And if you if you're um, make a mistake or if you want to change the order, it takes a lot longer to change the order. And what I'm talking about that is, you know, Robinhood I think is good for just single, single non-complex orders like buying a call, buying a put. I think that's fine. That works okay. Even though the 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 um, what's it called? <laughs> just threw, just blew uh, just drew blew uh drew a blank blank. There is um, the 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 pricing doesn't update as fast. So. I noticed in Robinhood. So the pricing, you're lagging a little bit behind. And if you're lagging behind in the in the 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 pricing, if you're lagging a little bit behind when you put the order in, you may not get filled. And that's why it's also very important to trade very liquid stocks. Like I'm gonna say SPY, Apple, Facebook, you know, all, all the stocks that are liquid. How do you know if a, how do you know if a stock is liquid or the options are liquid? If you click on any of these strikes here, you can see you can see the volume here, volume was sixty-four thousand. I generally think anything over 500 or anything a over a thousand is pretty liquid. But I, I've noticed that people were trading things that are like you know volume one, volume two, volume five, volume ten. You know, not good, not good. You're gonna get yourself into trouble. Uh, but what I mean by it takes longer. So let's say I wanted to put on a, a call credit spread. You know, you kind of have to play with this. It's not very familiar if you're used to the option trading. If it's your first experience and kind of going over to, to Tastyworks, you may get a little confused. But when you want to put on a call credit spread, you want to short the you want to short the option closer to in the money and go long the option further out for the money. So what I would do is I would sell the call here, and then you, you kind of notice that doesn't it, it puts me short call here doesn't change any colors here, which is kind of confusing to me. Where it should change the colors when you're short, it should change to like a different color so that you kind of know what you're doing. Otherwise, it just says sell. So when you're doing this, you get, you really have to pay you really have to pay attention. Um, the other thing is, so if you want to put the spread on, I'd have to then buy the call above it, and then you see it turns it into a call credit spread, and then you know you can go ahead with the order. I mean, I've done spread th through here, but it definitely takes a lot longer. And let's say you go through the order, you then have to go to your account, go to your history, cancel the order, and then do the whole order again. Versus if I go over to Tastyworks, you know, real quick, and I'm looking at June 10th here, we're on June 10th, and I'm short the calls here. You can see the calls are on the left, the puts are on the right. I just have to click on the bid here, click on the ask here, and it's ready. And you can see here, you can easily see which one I'm short and which one I'm buying. So I'm short this one, I'm buying this one, and the short one is in red, and the buying is in green. And you can kind of see exactly what you're paying for down here. You know, saying I'm getting 49 cent credit here. On Robinhood, it was saying I got a 48 cent credit. Um, but also, keep in mind, it'll tell me what my max profit is, you know, right here, and also my max loss. And I don't know if um, they'll tell me that. 
well, the credit the credit credit is what you'll receive. I don't have enough money in my account, but yeah, you'll get credit, and then your collateral is a hundred. So, you know, they don't actually tell you what your max loss is. You know, and then the collateral is a little bit uh, longer. Let me show you that screen. Sorry, you can sign it. Minimum credit. That's how much money I can make. Collateral. They're going to take a hundred from you. Versus in Tastyworks, the same trade. Let's go to. spread 285 286 let's go over here let me actually minimize myself here you can see that um, my max loss is 51 dollars and my max profit is 49 so you know and then and then on on tastyworks if i want to if i put the order through does it fill all i do is all i have to do is right click on the order and it will say replace and i can replace it change the pricing Bada bing, bada boom, I'm, I'm good to go. Versus in, in, in Robinhood, I have to actually cancel the order and then place a whole new order. And then let's say you're doing an iron condor, you know, which is gonna be even more complex. So then you would want to go to the put side, go to sell. I'm gonna sell the one closer to in the money and then I'm gonna buy the put closer to uh, a little further out. And as you can see now, I've constructed, oops, let me, let me go back. Messed that up for you guys, sorry go to here let me go to sell sell the put so i'm going to sell the put closer to in the money buy the one a little bit further out and as you can see here i have now constructed an iron condor so just be aware that when you're putting an iron condor in robin hood it does take a little bit of time and then by the time you got this whole order together you might you might have already you know the pricing may have already changed and you have to continue and you know you, you get the idea um the other thing that i want to point out is what I would say the number one thing that people get confused on is when they get assigned options. So when you get a assigned your short option, what does that mean? It's saying, so basically when you're short an option, like I, let's say I just sell this call. Let me just go back here, sell this call right here. Let me go back to sell this 285 call. Let's say I'm short this call and then I, it goes in the money and I'm, it's going against me. Um, I'm in trouble because you know the way to make money on short options is, is it for it to be out of the money and, for the theta to kick in to wear down and just theta to kind of wear down, wear down, wear down the option price. That's where you make money shorting options, you know, as an option seller. And what that means is you sold that option to somebody else. Now that third party, if you're in the money, can say, hey, I actually want to exercise this contract and I'm going to uh, take the shares. So, you know, as you as you know, if you're trading options, at least you should know, if you if you own a contract, it gives you the right to buy the shares of any of that stock in 100 shares at, at this price. So I could buy 100 shares of SPY at 285 if I were to exercise this, if I were to exercise this, if I was the option buyer. So if I bought the option, but being an option seller, the third party can trigger that at any time and, you, and it's kind of lottery how it works out. How do they pick them? Um, so the risk is that you're going to be you're going to be put on up for for that capital. So your account's going to show let me pull this up here, 285 times 100 shares, you know, your account's going to be showing like around, you know, minus the credit that you receive down, let's just say $28,000. You're going to wake up the next morning like, hey, I don't have that money. I don't, I don't have that. And that's selling naked, which, you know, you're not going to do. But the risk, the major risk when you're selling a spread is, and the biggest mistake I think people do is do like two, doing a too wide of a spread. So like they're going to like sell this call, the 285 call, but then they're going to buy something too far out, like a $5 wide. And the risk that I see here is, so it's still a call spread, spread but it's now it's, it's $5 ride and I'm going to get $127 and I'm, my, my max loss is probably going to be, it's going to be like four dollars 483 because your, your loss is the max, the width of the strikes, right? And we have $5 wide, so that's $500 minus $1.27, that's $127, so it's $483 max loss. You know, and people are thinking, okay, if I can only lose $500 on this trade, you know, I can make $127, you know, not so bad, right? But what a lot of people do, they put on super risky trades is let's say SPY, it comes back up to like the 287, 288 area and your 285 call gets exercised and you get assigned that, you get assigned short that stock. And then it kind of settles in there, but then your 290 protection, you know, you can't, it's not going to, 
offset the loss. So you're actually going to lose more money than that because if, if it closes at like 287, 288, the 290 call is going to be worthless. You can't exercise that since you do own the call. You can't exercise that because it's not in the money. So if it's not in the money, you're still going to be fronting those shares and you're going to be short those shares. And yes, Robinhood does have protections in place. They will sell those share or they'll, they'll, they will sell those shares for you. Um, you know those those shares that you're short for you. But you're you're depending on how how much higher SPY goes, you're still going to be on the hook for whatever that loss is. You know, so you're not going to owe the whole twenty eight thousand. But you could you could definitely lose a thousand. You could lose two thousand dollars. I mean, depending depending on what happens. I mean, it, or it could work or it could work for you let's say let's say you know you were short those shares 285 and it drops to 280 the next day you'll probably make some money and maybe it'll work out but there's a lot of risk that they don't tell you when doing stuff that wide and kind of how how that works um the other the other thing that i want to talk about is their support what you're not what you're not paying for so in free commissions you're not getting very good support if you get if you wake up the next morning you notice your, your account's down thirty thousand dollars you're probably freaking out because you only had five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars in there and there's no one to call there's no one to um really help you along the way versus like tasty works or think or swim or TD Ameritrade or E-Trade or any of those people that you pay commissions for, you know, I personally recommend Tastyworks. And if you're if you're interested, I definitely have my referral code below if you want to use it. If not, great, whatever. Um, but there's no one that you could talk to, and a lot of people get in a lot of trouble because they 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 can't solve the problem on their own, depending on what their account is and their size, and they don't know how to get out of it. Versus with like Tastyworks or TD Ameritrade. If you call someone up, you'll talk to a live person. They'll help you get out of the trade, and not only that, help you kind of minimize the blowback and how to offset that a little bit. You know, they're going to help you try to get out of it. You know, because they got to protect their assets along with you know make sure you're a happy customer. Where Robinhood, they don't really have that infrastructure because they're they're trying to be more automated, more AI driven, not really people driven. So that's I think is a key sticking point with someone and say, well. You know, I can't afford a dollar a contract. Well, how would it be if you didn't have support and you lost a thousand dollars? I mean, that could be a whole year's worth of commissions for you, you know, and all you had to do is pay a dollar a contract. You know, Tastyworks is a dollar a dollar per contract and zero dollars to close, minus some of the, the, the transfer fees or whatever. But you know, that's that's just pennies. So round trip you're per, per contract, you're probably paying a dollar twenty five, dollar fifty at the most, you know. So, you know, those are some of the risks. You know, I think that people are getting into trades that are are too risky for them they don't understand and robin hood is not there to help them along the way or help them learn there's not really any education on robin hood so obviously that's why we're making this video um definitely would love to help if you have any questions leave a comment below join the community you know stay safe stay green it's always us versus herd